Do you guys understand she got pregnant in a fucking car? She fell in love with a homeless man. She fell in love with a homeless man. And got a baby by him. Now want to put him on child support. Well, you know he don't have... Oh, God. So, by the time, like, August... I mean, October came around... You know, towards the end, this is this is the time where things started transitioning and I had to start taking care of myself because I had been relying on him to lead us. And he wasn't leading us in a direction that was making us progress. So I had to take- What do you mean lead us? He had not led himself. He was homeless. Listen to what this bitch thought. And a lot of bitches think that. All of a sudden, because you got a kid, I should get a job. All of a sudden, because you got a kid, I need to be responsible. When, bitch, you weren't responsible by letting me give a kid with you. Hashtag Crispy Cash. Go ahead and click that link in the description box that says, um, what does it say? Uh, Streamlabs. Make that red move. I had to take charge of the situation. And so the second I took charge of the situation and I started paying for the rooms myself i started getting on youtube asking for donations and you guys started helping me until i started doing it myself i started paying for the rooms myself getting on youtube asking for donations y'all hear this shit y'all y'all hear this shit right this is how irresponsible the black bitch can be in the united states and they allow her to continue to do this she thinks that what she's saying is there's no, there's nothing wrong with it. She said, well, what I continued to do was pay for these hotels and ask for money. And this was when she first got pregnant. There was not a time in which she was on her feet and lost everything, guys. That's not what happened. She was never on her feet and still. He was like kind of fading to the distance, you know, and I was starting to have to do everything on my own and I was stable. Like he would, when, when I had him leading us, we were jumping from one night we'd be sleeping in the back of the truck and then the next night we'd get a hotel room and then the next night we'd be in another hotel and then the next night it would be like that. And then sometimes we would spend three days in one room and then the next night we'd be in another. It was just a lot of hopping around, like jumping from place to place to place. And so then when I finally took charge, I got that room one time and I stayed there. I stayed at the, in that same room until December. So around this time was when I got that room and I started leading myself. And I stayed in that room until I moved to California, December 10th. And so the second I, I stopped giving him control over our situation is when stability started coming into my life and stability has been in my life since. Okay, so my downfall was trusting him to, uh, to lead us. I should have never trusted him to lead us, you know? And so even during that process, when we were in the back of the truck, he asked me one time, he said, can you go back and live with your daughter's father? And I said, why would I want to live with my daughter's father pregnant? I'm not going back there. So I flat, flat out said no to him. I was like, no. Like, not because my daughter's father wouldn't let me, but because I have more respect for my daughter's father. Number one, I'm pregnant by you. I can't go to my daughter's father's house and say, hey, can you let me in? I want to live here with you. I'm pregnant by another dude. But you know, forget the fact that you my ex. I'm going to come live with you. Now, now looking at it in hindsight, I see why Priest thought it was okay to ask me that because Priest and Sonia had that arrangement. They had the arrangement of, you know, they were living together out of convenience and she was dating other people and he was dating other people. So they used to have that situation. They disrespected each other. And sometimes Priest would come home and, and Sonia would have the guy that she's dating in the house. I ain't no way in fucking hell. Like, I'll tell you something. 
Ain't no way of fucking hell. I would be living with my ex, right? Out of convenience. I'd be living with my ex and then I come home and he got another chick sitting there in my goddamn living room. And vice versa. Like I would never be living with my ex and then bring a guy that I'm dating home and then <laughs> my ex come home and me and my new, new dude just sitting in the living room chilling. Ain't that crazy? That's what Sonya used to do to priests. Right? <laughs> you see, like, that shit is ridiculous. So, you know, when he asked me that, I was like, dude, first of all, like, I was thinking, why, why? She keeps doing that stupid laugh. <laughs> this bitch is nutty. I don't care what nobody tell me. This motherfucker's crazy as hell. <laughs> well, nothing's funny because you're being an idiot. Why would you want another man to take responsibility of a situation that you in? Are you feeling like the, the issue with the two of us is the fact that we're together? Because this is when I started thinking that this was about the, we were about to break up because I couldn't even believe he was asking me that. Because instead of him putting forth the energy, like a man, putting forth the energy to try to find a place for us to settle down and chill, right? Like a, the average man is supposed to. He started thinking of, of ways. ZYZ said, why is she telling us this? Exactly. See guys, you understand, I'm not going through her business. I'm not putting out her real name, her real address, none of this. I'm listening to what she's saying. I'm just sitting up here just with you guys listening to what she's decided to put out for the whole world to see and asking what type of individual does this? It's for other people to handle his responsibilities and to handle his, his relationship with me. So instead of him like like going out there looking for other side hustles and stuff like that, he just wanted to figure out a way to dump me off, dump his responsibility off on somebody else. So he could go back and live with Sonya because Sonya was uh, supposedly living alone in her own place. Because she had moved, like he had got her evicted. Diaz said, Tommy, my girl don't like you, but she heard me listen to you and she said, that girl's crazy. That girl sounds crazy as fuck. Exactly. You don't have to like me. This has nothing to do with me. This literally has something to do with this woman is saying this shit out in the public and thinks she's in the right. From the place that they were living in and she had moved and was living somewhere else alone, supposedly. So, so his plan in his mind, now that I'm thinking in hindsight, the plan in his mind was that he was going to move with her and just, he wanted me to go back and move back with my ex. And I don't think when he said he wanted to get back with Sonya that it was so he could be with her, be with her. I think he said that because he wanted Sonya to live because he was tired of the responsibility of having to deal with you. taking the, the, the pressure of him being the one in charge and him being the one that had to lead. Because I remember when I first started leading, I ended up moving out of the apartment, the studio apartment. She just told y'all this man wanted to have nothing to do with her or this baby. He went back to his wife and she's still going. I mean, that we were in catching an Uber to the in town suites. I wasn't at the extended state of America. I was at the in town suites. And I took an Uber from the studio apartment we were at to an entirely different in town suites. And I moved everything in there by myself. And I think like Priest was like slick watching me because he used to work really <laughs> far from this in town suites. And for some reason, in under like 20 minutes, he showed up because he like called me and he said, I'm going to come from work to check on you. And then he got there in like 20 minutes. I was like, dude, how'd you get here so fast? Because work is like 45 minutes away. So I think he was watching me. Um, I, I think he was like sneak. He was somewhere around, which is weird. You understand? Because like, I think he was trying to sneak up on me to see if I had somebody helping me. But I didn't. I was just me, like by myself, like, like struggling. Too, because I was pregnant, I was sick, so I was struggling. And anyway, 
once I put the my room and my own name and, and everything and I was leading and I was in charge, everything started smoothing out. And so I think he was trying to come back and, you know, once things started smoothing out with me. So when I came to him and said, listen, you're going to have to kick out more money if you want me to fix you those seafood dinners you like so much because seafoods cost money. So you got to kick in more money. Can you do that? I remember us having that conversation on, on a Sunday. We went out on a date that weekend. And then that Sunday, I said, do, he said he wanted to go back to his a diet of just only eating seafood. And I said, well, you're gonna to have to kick more money in for groceries because seafood costs way more than like regular food. And I don't know why, because they're like insects and roaches of the sea. You would think insects and roaches of the sea would be like cheaper, <laughs> but they weren't. So I was like, dude, um, you're gonna have to- <laughs> But they weren't. You would think that insects and roaches of the sea. <laughs> First off, ma'am, how would you get them insects and roaches of the sea? You got to get a fucking boat and you got to go and, sw- uh, and, and and fish for them, jackass. So <laughs> that might be why insects and roaches of the sea is more expensive. Because you got to get a motherfucking boat to go get them. <laughs> you got to have a crew of fishermen to go get it. <laughs> then you got to bring them back. <laughs> then you got to freeze them and be able to take them to all the damn places around the world so they will be fresh. <laughs> Stupid bitch. You have to kick forth some more money if you want, you know. Eh. But um, I guess he couldn't. And instead of being a man saying, you know what, I can't. He hit me up the next day talking this weird, I want to sleep with a whole bunch of women and I want to be back with Sonia and I don't know how I feel about you thing. I don't think it was like, as I'm looking at it in hindsight, I don't think it had anything to do with how he felt about me. I think he genuinely was like broke. And he just, he just, the pressure. Remember the conversation I had with the bitch last night? Why is it that no matter what you tell a woman, she always go back to saying she thinks something else? Like you'll be direct to this bitch. This is the reason why I don't want to have anything to do with you, bitch. I think that it's because uh, of the fact that you really want to be with me, but you can't because of. No, I just really don't want to be with you. I think the reason he said he don't want to be with me is because of having to finally take responsibility of me and a child or just a woman in general and a child. He just got weak. You know what I mean? And what I want to say, what the premise of this entire live stream is for those who may be a little confused, (laughs) the whole premise is that struggle love, like when, when you are in a situation that the two of us was in, a lot of people, that type of situ- situation ends up bringing them together. Because if you can't survive together, then you can't be together. Like if you can't be through a situation like that and make your relationship stay together through it, it's okay to get weak and it's okay to be afraid, but to leave one another inside of that relationship, if, if a person ever leaves you in the middle of your life being like that, don't you ever get back with them. Don't don't you ever allow them to give you some type of excuse. How the hell is this woman giving anybody any kind of advice? Seriously. This ain't struggle love, this is cringe love. How is she giving anybody any advice? To be able to come back into your life if they leave you when you're struggling like that. Now, that's, you, that's one thought. He was never with you. Y'all were literally going around fucking in the back of a truck and washing off at Walmart bathroom, and you thought it'd be okay to have a baby in those circumstances. This is sick. Secondly, don't hold a man down. If from the beginning, it's been an equal situation Okay. And suddenly you feel like he's starting to be selfish with money or he's not telling you the truth about what he's making or if he, or if he just starts acting really strange in regards to finances, he might be hiding something in regards to his job. If, if it feels wrong, 
don't stick in the situation and convince yourself that you need to stick by your man because a man will appreciate you if you stick with him through that situation. What they do is, if you are miserable in a situation and you don't feel like a man is providing for you how he should, maybe he needs a new job, maybe he needs a new car, maybe whatever the case is, whatever it is that he needs to work on, you have to back away from that situation and allow him to work on it. Because if you stick with him through that, men tend to lose respect for you and think- Why is anybody listening to this bitch? You're less valuable because another type of woman, a high valued woman in that situation would not tolerate a man in that specific type of situation. Like I said in a, a live chat before, if a woman does not want to help you improve your life, and if she's comfortable with you being in like this one place and she rocked. Somebody says she speaks some truth. Oh, some of that, that idea of, of that. Yeah, I, I, I actually can see some truth in what she just said there. The problem is nobody will hear you say it, bitch. You're not coming from a good place. You're not even coming from a I realize place. You're not coming from a I made a mistake place. No, you're not. She When she called out, she said, uh, people of high value recognize people of high value. Well, she's with a dude that has a low value and she said it herself. So that means she's not a person of, of high value. The only way I would listen at her if I was any of those people is if she started blaming herself. This would be the perfect time for her to value her self if she started valuing herself if she started saying i don't want to see other people go through and make the mistakes that i made it, it, then it'd be it'd be a good discussion but that's not what it is it's with you and doesn't pressure you to improve you don't need to be with her i remember being with priests like listen you need to find another source of income see what is it that you know how to do so we can create another business see how she gave herself a pass. If you're not with a girl that's, that's willing to pressure you to be better than where you are, then you don't need to be with her. See, I used to push Priest. How did you push him to be better than what he is when you don't turn this man into a father when he didn't have a job? She really believes that she pushed him to be a better person while making him a father when he didn't want to be one. For you. You need to go out here and try to get your GED because the fact that you ain't got it is just some bullshit. And these are all things that I was coming to him. She got pregnant by a dude that don't even have his GED. Wow. I'm talking about, I was putting him in a place to where he had no choice but to become a man or leave. And, and no woman before me was doing that. No woman was requiring that from him. And I think he was trying to find an exit because it was too hard for him to stand on his own two feet and be a real man, not not the definition of what he- it's Two tests he couldn't pass, the STD or the SAT. He thought a man was. Not the hyper-masculinity that he was taught by the women in his life previous to me, but he literally had to become a real man. And the concept of that was too hard. The concept, like, ha like having to fall in line with that was very difficult. Now, am I gonna be judgmental in regards to that? Not so much, because I know sometimes people live a certain way and then when it comes time for them to make a change, it can be scary. But at the same time, I don't want no bitch. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I know that's sound crazy, but you, know, but you know, I don't want no bitch. I want a man to see some, some, some stuff that might be fearful and that might be hard, and I need him to do whatever he can to tackle it. You know, a lot of men don't have the discipline to move forward or to change their life. They just do a lot of wishful thinking and a lot of talking. And I think with Priest, he was doing a lot of talking and wishful thinking. It, it like takes you. more energy than he was willing to put forth in order to stay inside of the relationship. So ladies, when these men spend his money on you, when they spend his money for the dates, what you're doing is you're looking for the effort he has to put in in order for that date to be a success. Jesus Christ. It's not just about how much money he spends. I mean, he could take you to Red Lobster and still not be putting forth any type of effort to make sure that the date is amazing. And exactly. 
why is she putting out this man's business like this? This is weird. And guys, she's been doing it. She did it for the nine months. She did it for the entire nine months of her pregnancy and the six months after the kid is born. She's not let this man go. Somebody in the comment section, I can't remember who it was, but you can shout yourself out. She said, why not just take it as a loss and move on? I've never understood that. If you a real strong black woman, as they say they are, why would you fuck are you gonna stalk a nigga down? Just move on with your fucking life. And if you start dating, a I guarantee you her life would be better if she stopped worrying about what he doing. If she just said, let me move on, take care of my kid and leave this man alone. I guarantee you he'd probably come back and decide to be in that kid's life when she left him the fuck alone. Guy, you guys are in a relationship. It's not about how much money he spends on you in that relationship. It's more of how much effort does he put inside of the situation? And usually, if he's putting effort into the situation, it will require money. Okay? It will require him having to spend money. Fellas. Somebody said it's amazing how all these black women can tell you what a real man is, but they can't pick one. Amazing, isn't it? When there are women out there that are requiring one thing she's not saying is how about stop fucking married men? How's that? How about stop fucking homeless men? These are two things that she could say right now. You know what I learned? Stop fucking married men. You know what I learned? Stop fucking homeless men. You know what I learned? Stop getting pregnant by a nigga that I just said doesn't have his GED. She has no problem throwing him under the fucking bus. So you, you were a slow magnet man. That's why you was living in caves and shit. You got a slow magnet man. You to pay for dates and give her gifts and flowers and stuff like that. These are he found you on plenty of fish, and his first damn message to you was unga bunga. All things that listen, I used to want flowers and stuff from priests all the time. All of the stuff that he, you know, I wanted, he was giving me, you know. But other women in his life had never required that stuff. Yeah, I was requiring you? stuff for him that women had never required. You didn't even require this nigga to have a damn brace of residence. He went to get insurance on his truck. It took from Geico. It took him two hours. And he was so easy that the Geico caveman could do it. I wanted him to do the, the romantic things and the, and the buying the gifts and the, the, you know shit like that traveling and stuff I wanted him to do these things this, this was a requirement and yet you were in a car at Walmart taking a bath ladies if you gotta wash your pussy out of Walmart bathroom you shouldn't give your pussy to nobody else I will not give you my pussy until at least I can bathe in your house <laughs> that would be my requirement that's my prerequisite if I'm a woman you know what I'm tired of washing my pussy out at this motherfucking Walmart if you want to fuck me, you got to at least provide a tub. <laughs> but the women he was previously with did not require that he he did all those things. She would do things for him. But he never equally reciprocated that same behavior back. And so I was asking him to reciprocate. No, you weren't. You were fucking him in a truck. Ma'am, stop acting like you didn't just tell us what you were doing. This is sick. I was requiring him to do nothing, bitch. The problem with priests is he doesn't. It wasn't even a bare minimum. It was a cub minimum. He know how to reciprocate love. He does. He doesn't know how to love someone. He didn't know how to do it, and he thought that what he had been doing all of those years was love, and it wasn't. And that's why. They had so many problems in their situation to begin with. They had so many issues. So fellas, ladies, struggle love is not like always a good thing. You know, sometimes people get in struggle love and it makes their relationship stronger. But then other times people get in struggle love and you start to see the truth about the person that you're dealing with. Just learn a lesson. You know, don't try to force your situation to be a good struggle love outcome. If, it's, if you see your situation deteriorating, just learn from the situation and let it deteriorate. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you, I'm going to give you good advice. Stop struggling. Why do black people want to struggle love? What the fuck does that mean? I want to love you where we don't have to struggle. 
Why we got to be behind the eight ball before we before we can be great? Can't we just start off being great, bitch? You understand? But not all struggle love situations turn out to be negative. Sometimes it does bring two people together, you know? But one thing struggle love can bring is a pattern of struggle. No one wants to be stuck in this pattern of struggle. And... Ma'am, you are 38 years old, and he was an old man that hadn't even went and got his GED, as you stated. All y'all do is struggle. Every day they're struggling. Every day they're struggling. Every day they're struggling. That's what they're doing every day. Priest had a pattern of struggling. I didn't start having like this weird struggle issue until like two years ago. That was the first time I ever like experienced like super struggle like that. I've never struggled that way. Like that was, oh my God. Like I I tell people all the time, the last. I love when people just try to um, parse what they mean. You know, when people, when when we was doing the shows, guys, when people saying, oh, that's a fight. Oh, Oh, you mean a fight fight. You know, she said, oh, struggle. No, oh, I, oh, I thought you meant struggle, struggle. This is just a struggle. She said super struggle. What the fuck is a super struggle? How do you delineate between the struggle and the super struggle? Three years have been difficult for me. They've been the, one of the worst three years of my life because something happened in my life with someone else that threw my life off off together. And it wasn't Priest, it was somebody more important to him and my family. That something happened to them and it affected everything. You were struggling when you was with daddy because you was in hotels all over. You've been in nothing but hotels. You need to be the spokeswoman for Hotels.com. Captain Obvious. Everyone in our family. So it, it knocked everything off financially, everything. It was a big deal and it was a big thing and it was hard to deal with. And this was the first time in my life I had ever experienced something so tumultuous. And so as I'm changing my life right now, like I'm not struggling as much as I was, you know, last year around this time, but I'm still in my rebuilding stage. It's still certain things that I have to work on. And you decided to bring a child through this. An innocent child had to go through your fucked up shit. The shit that's you. I want y'all to hear this. The shit that's making her get online and yell at people and say, click your donate button in the bottom to make that $67 go fat farther than it is. It's just a $67. It's been that for a while. I mean, I'm just saying that's probably what she would be saying right now if she was me. This woman says the struggle was that bad that it made her lose it. She brought a kid into that. That's why I have no respect for the majority of women. They will know how it feels to be without, and they'll bring their kids right through that shit. Now, I, I do have income, but I had to finish. I mean, I, I had to literally fix my credit from when I was, I didn't have any income. I had to pay off all of the bills and stuff that were behind. I have still have so many things I have to fix that derailed in a year. And I've been very, very honest about it. You know, when I've asked for donations and stuff, I've asked for donations. That's the very reason why, because, you know, it was very hard. Like, and I th- I didn't feel bad. Y'all, she's going to clown me if y'all don't move that $67. Oh, she's going to make fun of me and I don't want her to make fun of me. So y'all have to move that $67 out of the way and, and, and make it go up. It says $67 is 6.7%. She's going to laugh at me like it did on Carrie. You. They're all gonna laugh at you. No, there are no more VIP tickets left. They're done. The only VIP le- uh, tickets left now are the packages, and those are really expensive. So if you want to buy an advertising package, then go ahead. But other than that, you got to buy regular tickets. About asking for help, like when me and Priest was together and things was happening, I would ask for donations to fix situations with he and I, um, and things that he couldn't provide for me. How many of y'all would be willing to donate to a grown ass woman that live in the house with a grown ass man or got a grown ass man and they just sit there and got themselves grown ass pregnant? <laughs> I don't way in hell I'm gonna give you any money. Seriously, I'm gonna tell my daughter this. She can go out and run away with a nigga all she want to. I'm going to live with Brad. Okay. She gonna live with Brad and tell me, um, me and Brad need some money for the lights. No, y'all don't. 
You ran away with Brad. Y'all are not one, but two grown people living in the same house. The light should never go off. One, mm, could happen. Two, nope. Brad, gonna have, you, you ran away from my house, ma'am, because you ran to Brad. That means Brad was willing to do the same thing I as your father was doing because you're giving him more than you gave me. Remember, you having to fuck Brad. You got to suck Brad dick. You got to do all kinds of stuff you didn't have to do when you lived in the house with me, remember? All you had to do was go to school when you lived in the house with me. Clean your room when you went and lived in the house with me. You didn't have to degrade yourself. Brad making you degrade yourself. So surely you'd have been there and said, well, Brad and ladies, y'all should all have this discussion with your boyfriend. Can I get an amen or not? Y'all tell me if I'm right or wrong. I'm about to leave out of my house with my parents. While I'm in my house with my parents, there's always orange juice. I like orange juice. There's always milk. I love milk. There's always, sometimes they have lobster in the house and steak. I love those too. Pop tarts. I don't eat those. They be in that old. But I like the toast strudels myself. So I just want to make sure that when I come into your house, there won't be lacking in these basic things that I have at my house. Because remember, I'm sucking your dick. I don't have to suck my daddy dick or eat my mama's pussy. I just get to live in the house. Now, when I come to your house, you're going to have a prerequisite of me putting my, my mouth on your nasty dick. So and I don't mind doing it because I care for you. But I just want to make sure that you got them strudels up in there. You got the steak. That's all I want to make sure. As long as that's up in there, I'm good. That's all I want to know. You got the basics. Regular admission is not sold out yet. So stop saying that, taco noodles. Regular admission is not sold out. But I want y'all to think about it. As a woman, what you should say is, when I leave my parents' house, I want to move into equal situation as in base amount. That's it. Just as long as we can have the basics, we're good. If I cannot get the basics, we got a problem. You know, and because listen, ladies, you can still fuck the nigga and live at home with your parents. It's not hard. My cousin, when she got ready to get engaged with her, the dude she got engaged with, she immediately moved back home because she said she was trying to save money. She said, so when they got married and she did, she saved every bit of money where she worked, she saved every dime and she put it towards their, their, um, their house. So the first house they moved into was a $450,000 house paid for. Cause she just said, "Why?" She said, "I'm over his house, over his apartment anyway, most of the time. Why the fuck am I gonna sit up here and just have an apartment when I'm always with him? I'm just literally paying for something that I don't even use." Of course, my my YouTube subscribers and supporters felt very comfortable with giving me donations um, because I was all the tickets that are left are all the tickets that are on the website. That's it. So you don't have to ask. Everything that you see available on the website, those are still there. It's scamming them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just flat out telling the truth. Like, I was like, yo, I'm going through blah, blah, blah. I need money for this or that. I need donations. I plan on doing a live show over in England. For this or that. So a lot of people felt very, very, like, open to donating me. Donating. Yes, Miss Betty Boop. Just get the regular tickets. All it is is you don't get to hang out with us at the beginning. That's all. The VIP tickets. Uh, or you can buy the two big stage tickets. I think it's two stage tickets left. To me, because I wasn't scamming them. You know, a scam is usually when a fraud is usually when people be like, "Yo, I'm going to offer you this e-class or e-book, <laughs> or I'm going to prop." <laughs> Her laugh is just so irritating. I'm going to shoot this turnaround of such and such investment. So I need you to give me X amount of dollars so we can do blah blah blah. That's a damn scam. So. I didn't scam anybody. I was very honest about what I what I wanted and what I needed. And yes, I'm going to Europe, not the other England. I don't know what other England it is, but I'm going to Europe. Stop asking me where I'm going. Sell out this one. A lot of people just respected that about me and wanted to help. A lot of people didn't want to see me going through that. And it was a, it was a, a lesson, definitely. But I just wanted to share what I learned from the struggle, love. You know, there's a difference between struggling together and building together. Sometimes when you build with people, you, the struggle is, you got to struggle a little bit because it, because in order for something to go smooth, sometimes you got to work out the kinks. So I think what I was thinking when I was inside of my relationship with Priest 
when we first moved together and we were looking for a place, I thought this was the struggle moment to where we're ironing, ironing out the kink so we can smooth out us two being together. Cause we- so why have a baby? Why have a baby? We had never been together before, uh, lived together before. You know, this is this is our first time, so we got to learn each other's quirks. We got to learn, you know, how to do stuff with each other. It just- Don't ask me what the name of my show. Stop talking about my show. The tickets are in the damn description box. Either go click and buy, hurry up and buy, or leave. Stop talking about it. Jesus Christ. Keep talking about my damn show like you're buying tickets. Y'all not buying tickets. Buy the tickets. You bring up my show, bring up the tickets. I should see that. Tickets. It just doesn't just flow smoothly all the time. There will be certain things in your side of your relationship that will flow smoothly. But then some other things will be hard. And so you have to decide whether it's worth putting in the work. And when I was priest with... Somebody said they bought the show. What? Bought the show? You bought the whole thing? know how you did that but i'll come watch you now priest i thought it was worth it i thought he was worth it i was like he's worth the struggle that we're experiencing we'll get out of this he and i are both strong people we can do this we both work hard you know this is just a a, a like <laughs> a mountain that we have to climb both of us have been through <laughs> worse i'm pretty sure he and i can get through this together this is where my thought process was and where his thought process was was a little more immature than that it was it was wrapped up in so many other things that weren't even priority in our situation and what gaming network bro don't you see on the top what it says up there in red it says crispy cash so when that man put hashtag crispy cash y'all gotta do a better job of if you're gonna moderate uh, you got to do a better job of knowing what happened. Don't if you if you haven't been. Hey, stop blocking. Hey guys, if you're a moderator and you're walking in at the last minute and you don't know what's going on. Just wait and catch up. That's all I'm asking. Just don't come in and just say let me block. Remember guys, there's a bunch of moderators so if you came in late, you can let one of the ones that's been there for a while do that. I look back at that, I just think, like a high side, I just be looking like, this nigga just squandered like a good situation. For- Thank you, Daryl. Go ahead and pick up some of them tickets. There's 10 left, 10 left, 10 general admission left. What does it say right now? 10 general admission that's left. And there's a huge package, a $400 package, a gold one that's left. The silver is sold out. And the br- there's two more bronze packages left. You can get those. Um, the VIP is all gone. So the bronze is higher than the VIP and the gold is the highest. Um, and then the general admission... 10 of them left to Dallas. I wish 50 Cent had bought my front row, all of my front row tickets. I wouldn't have been mad. I'd have sat there and talked to the chairs. I'm not Ja Rule. I don't give a fuck. I'll put some pictures of niggas. Listen, if you sold them, I just gave them away free. And let anybody come in. If all the seats are already sold, I just open the door and let people come in. Shame on you, 50 Cent. Like, I, I think it's funny, but you're not going to make me feel bad for doing that. If you buy out all my seats, I'm just going to let people come in free. What's up? I fuck around, put them online, sell them again. I put them on StubHub and resell them. shit me and i sell them for half price so now 50 cent i bought them for full price i would sell them same tickets back for half price and now i made 150 uh 150 percent you gotta learn how to do business people you can't make me feel bad by giving me money no (laughs) gonna embarrass me with a good time fuck shit like who was something so fucking stupid and of course with time he'll understand you know what he's done wrong 
but you know when i talk to people about my relationship when they get into detail and they start asking me questions because they want to compare it to their own situation that's what if I'm you just bought the ticket then what you'll do is uh um she's going to send you uh, monique is going to send you the address so everybody who's uh, bought tickets she will send it to you in the morning a lot of people do a lot of the time when they email me I do tell people, when I do tell people the story, and they say, you did not deserve that. You're such a good person. And Who told her she was a good person? Seriously, who had this discussion with her? You don't know this woman, and everything you've seen her do online, it's pretty shitty. So I don't think anybody's going to sit there and say, well, you don't deserve what you're getting now, which is, you fucked a broke man with no GED that was married to somebody else. You don't deserve to have this man not want the kid when he told you up front he didn't want the kid. You don't deserve a man not having money to help you when he had no money to help you. You don't deserve being homeless right now when you were homeless when you got the fucking baby. How do you not deserve what the fuck you got? And other people who know me for years, they say, Sansa, you know, you, you didn't deserve that. You're such a good person. Um, he just made like this big mistake. Like, I can't believe he, he did that. That's so cruel. That's so ugly. I say to people what my mistake was. And my mistake was seeing that he had insecurities and issues that he needed to deal with. And instead of me leaving him alone because of those issues, I decided to give him the benefit of the doubt. And her, that's why as of lately, the videos that- Where her mistake was, was being around you because you're a bad person. It's never she's done anything wrong other than, oh, I gave someone a chance that I shouldn't have. How the fuck is that you taking any responsibility? You're taking no responsibility for this. My only mistake was, <laughs> Jesus Christ. You guys have heard me do the live streams and stuff. I have been stressing the fact that all people who are nice and kind, the first thing you need to do is stop giving people the benefit of the doubt when you see them showing you who they are. When they show you they're up to some shit, when they show you they, they're a level of crazy, if they show you that they, they aren't prepared for a relationship, but their behavior kind of seems like, like sometimes people will show you some behavior that it'll, it'll seemingly look like they're ready because they're just giving you what you want to see. They're putting on a performance. But you have intuition there. Some shit just don't, but it don't look right. It don't sound right. It don't feel right. And you're just looking like, this feels wrong. This sounds wrong. This ain't right. Right? Follow that. Follow that. Like I like the, the morning, the last day I saw a priest, that morning, I fixed him breakfast. I, I told you guys this story. Here's the story. One more time. <laughs> God, if you I heard it 300 man. more times, let's do 301. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Saturday, Saturday, we had went out. We went to see Thor. Thor. We had dinner. We had dinner at TGI Fridays. I had a good time. We laughed. We had a. And this bitch has lived in Atlanta, Georgia, for about thirty years. Where's this accent coming from? Great time. We shared un an umbrella. It was raining. I loved him so much, you guys. I really did. Like with everything. Okay. Like I would have never hurt him. Never. I've never lied to him. I never cheated on him. I loved him so much. I've never lied to him. I've never cheated on you was with this man for a couple of fucking weeks. You was with this man for a couple of fucking weeks. How you love this man and now you dragging him. If you loved his man and you would never hurt him, you wouldn't hurt him now. How many of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about? Tell me if I'm lying if, if I'm lying or not. If you love somebody, you're not gonna hurt them now. If the only thing was they didn't want to be with you, you're not going to do it. And I can even give her the, I lashed out at him at the beginning. Not now, though. Not now. You've had enough time. You're not going to try to ruin him. You know he doesn't have a job. Now you're trying to ruin anything he can do by putting him on child support. When you said you wouldn't put him on child support. There is no reason to do this. There are several girls who I used to be with who it really hurt me when they broke up. But you don't see me trying to ruin their motherfucking life. There's no way I would do that. That shows that you love somebody and you would never hurt them. Because they chose to not be with you, you're going to fuck them up. I loved him so much. I would have never done anything to hurt this man. Okay. Like he was my everything. All right. And so that next day I got sick, <laughs> right? I was supposed to wash clothes. I got sick. He went out and did something with his car. 
came back. I was still sick. I went to sleep that night and I woke up early as hell the next morning. It was like five. And around that time, I wasn't waking up around five because I was like literally tired. So I would wake up when he woke up to go to work. And he would wake up at like maybe six and like wash up, you know, do his daily routine and go to work. And sometimes I would drop him off at work. And so this morning, I woke up and I was like, why can't I go back to sleep? It wasn't five, it was like four. It wasn't even five. It was, I was like, why can I not go back to sleep? So instead of me going back to sleep, I got up and cooked him breakfast. And so when he woke up, I said, something don't feel right. I said, today going to be a weird day. Like, like something's not cool. Something feels wrong. Something feels wrong. You got up and cooked him breakfast where? Because you said y'all was living in a damn car when you found out you were pregnant. Where were you getting up and cooking them breakfast at? Right, and she's got so much intuition. And it always leads her to niggas with no G, without, without a GED. I'm like, you don't feel that? He was like, no, nah. like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, something feels like crazy. And then he grabbed the breakfast and then he said, I love you, and gave me a kiss, and said, have a good day, and left. And usually, he would call me in the morning time. When he got the, to work, he would text me, or he would call me after a certain time. And it was like 10 o'clock. I didn't hear from him. So like sometime around like 2 p.m., I, I hit him up like, are you okay? Like, what's going on? Like, are you all right? How is your day going? He said he had, had the worst day. He was saying, I have had a horrible day. You have no idea. This is what he was saying to me. And I said, well, listen, whatever it is that you're going through, when you get home, we can talk about it. Like, whatever you want to do, if you want to cook dinner, I mean, go, go grab some dinner. I'll cook. <laughs> you want some head? I'll give you some head. <laughs> You want a massage? Whatever it is that you want. Who is listening to this bitch and want to get with this bitch afterwards? This woman is 40 years old talking like this, y'all. This is not a 20-year-old. This is not a 25-year-old. Nope. This is a 40-year-old. We could do and you can just relax, you know. I know how it feels to have a rough day, basically. Yeah, I was just like, well, when you get here, we can just chill. You don't have to do anything uh, amazing. You can just rest. I want you to have some peace. And this fool said, I got to tell you something. I said, oh, shit. All right. I said, well, tell me via text. He was like, nah, it's about another woman. I said, oh, God. Now, I had this rule with him. I said, if it's anything that's got to do with another woman, we got to talk about it. You can't text it to me. So we got to talk about it. So I called. And... She had a rule with him. Who sets this rule up? Guys, who sets a rule that says, and I quote, if it's anything to do with another woman, we have to talk about it face to face. You cannot text me. We get on the phone and he's like, yo, I, I just really got to tell you something. And then he got quiet. And so I was quiet. And I was listening. I was like waiting for him to say something. And I just sat there. And, and, and the awkward silence was so long. It was like this long, like abnormally <laughs> long. And I didn't say anything. I didn't say hello. I didn't say, could you hurry up and tell me? I just waited. And he said, I think I want to date Sonia. And I was like, what? He was like, I don't know how I feel about you. I was like, what? I said, you don't, what you mean you don't know how you feel about me? You don't want to, you don't want to be with me anymore? He said, no. I said, so, so wait a minute. I was like, wait. I said, you want to date Sonia? He said, yeah. I said, so you don't want this relationship? He said, no. I said, so you don't want our baby? He said, no. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah. I'm like, what about me? What you going to do about me? He said, I don't know. I said, okay, come get your shit. I'm get your shit. I ain't gonna be here when you get here. He said, okay, I'll go the phone. And I have not seen him since. And that was 
you have not i want you guys to hear what she said she's not seen him since but she's still fucking with him she's still talking to him she's still talking about him she has not seen him since y'all listen to this she has not seen him since he told her off top i don't want this and here it is a year and a half later she's still talking about this man will not let him leave and keeps talking about his wife using his wife's name we don't need to know this woman's name november 12th i think november 13th maybe something like that have not seen him since and one thing that you haven't seen this nigga in a year and you still talking about him that i couldn't understand about this is that we were going through so much like the only thing this man should have been thinking about was survival and if he's a human being like i'm a human being he was thinking about survival and the way that he thought he could survive is if he got rid of me and went to move backwards on me okay so if he's thinking about survival then why are you fucking with him if you believe that he's thinking about survival why are you trying to make it to where he can't survive i want y'all to hear what she just said she believes the only reason he went back to his wife is because he's thinking about survival yet this bitch isn't thinking about survival at all hence she had the kid this bitch is trying to ruin his survival by constantly making videos to ruin his life so he just basically threw me to the wolves Y'all have embarrassed me tonight. Y'all have got me at the $67 and nobody's got me past $67. She's going to laugh at me. She's going to make a video tomorrow saying, hi, hi, you only got $67 broadcasting my show. She's going to laugh at me. Come on now. Click the link in the description box. Click it. To save himself. It's like two people floating in the ocean and it's only one damn life jacket. So instead of drowning together or just keep swimming he decided to let me drown instead of grab the life jacket and swim off by himself so ladies struggle love isn't always something that you need to stick to because you feel like the prize is going to be that this man is going to be loyal to you for the rest of your life because a lot of women feel like if i stick with him through this he's going to love me forever and ever and ever and ever and that's how I was thinking. I was thinking, if I sleep in the back of this truck with this man and I hold on tight and I just stick by him through all this, we'll be fine. And he'll understand that I will be with him through anything. That's not, that's not what happened, y'all. That's not, that's not how that went. So I just wanted to share that with the ladies, you know, <laughs> fellas too, you know. Just be Larry. Just be Larry. I love his priest a lot. So many things. He was so funny. He was so funny. We had a good time together for everything I said. He had a funny, like, clever rebuttal. He had so much confidence. He was so spiritual. I used to call him my healer. We used to sit down and talk about spirituality. He was physically active he liked to to rock climb like me we were we had plans to work out together and lose weight together oh well, god he was already like muscular and stuff because he had been working out jesus i changed Christ. my diet with him a, a diet that i wanted to change anybody it, it was already you know the kind of diet i had was kind of um you know good for me anyway but he he really really tried to help me with that and i tried to help him stick to it so we had so many plans to be together and to move forward with each other. She sounds like I a... loved the man that he was trying to become. I loved who he was. Everything was good until I got pregnant and he showed me this other person that I didn't even recognize. And the person that I didn't recognize that I was seeing, that was him. Is because Eliza in there? That, he was showing me somebody. Is Eliza in the comment section? I mean, that wasn't real. He was showing me the guy he thought I wanted. He wasn't showing me himself. He wasn't showing me this guy who was like extremely cruel and insecure. 
and promiscuous and really still have feelings for his ex and didn't want to be with me but was only pretending to be with me because he liked the idea of be, being with someone who was quote unquote popular or a celebrity or uh -huh. dollars like he <laughs> I gotta rewind it listen to what she said promiscuous and really still have feelings for his ex and didn't want to be with me, but was only pretending to be with me because he liked the idea of be, being with someone who was quote unquote popular or a celebrity or had X amount of dollars. Like he really believed, he had this notion in his mind that I was bigger than what I was actually showing him I was. And it disappointed him when I showed him I was human. And if you get disappointed by the person that you're with, when they show you that they're human, you were with them for the wrong reasons to begin with. When a person gets ill or sick or they can't provide for you how they used to, if you change your mind about that person altogether to where you don't want to be with them, you were with that person for the wrong reasons to begin with. Only a machine tells you they have to show you that they're human. Ladies, ladies, fellas, I know you guys want to be with people who will stick with you through anything. You know, it's people out here with cancer. You're looking at your husband and wife hoping they never leave. You got people out here who, you know, maybe you used to have a whole bunch of money and then you ended up being broke. And you want your partner to stay with you through that. If you've built a foundation with somebody long. Oh, no, her and Mary Tyra Moore, they would have a great relationship together her and mary tyra moore would be like a, a great relationship they both be saying you know what i mean they both be blaming every problem they have on everybody else instead of themselves they both have the ability to stalk a motherfucker to the end of the earth hashtag flat earth before you have problems a lot of the time that person will end up staying and the only reason they end up staying isn't because they love you it's because a lot of times it's a habit, it's habitual. They're staying with you because they're so used to being there. And they don't even want to do the terrifying thing of starting over with someone new, even though they are extremely unhappy with being with you while you're at your lowest. Yet he left you and your life of living in his truck. To start over with someone he was with before called his wife. He realized that, um, well, I'd be better off being with a bitch that actually know what it's like to wash her pussy. Because how do you fuck a bitch that wash her pussy in the Walmart sink, in the bathroom? I wouldn't even want to have sex with you. Let's suck your dick. No, no. We need to get a job. You need to suck some other people's dicks with money. <laughs> That's what I'm okay with sharing, bitch. You need to suck some other people's dicks so we can get their money. Stop sucking mine. There's nothing involved. My dick is a broke dick. This is a run. You are wasting your suction on my dick. Let's go and, and get you in front of some dudes who can help us get out of this motherfucking Burger King bathroom and Walmart stalls. A lot of people are like that. So don't cling on to the fairy tale or the exception to the rule that some people have when they get sick or they lose money and the person that they with sticks by them. I can, I can hear a priest now with a big old nose on his face going around saying, I once got busy in a Burger King bathroom. I'm sick with this straight gangster Mac, but sometimes I get ridiculous. <laughs> I drank up all the Hennessy you got on yourself. So just let me introduce myself. My name is Humpty, pronounced with a umpty. <laughs> the Humpty Dance is your chance to do the hump. Oh, do it, baby. Oh, do the Humpty Hump. Oh, come on, do the Humpty Hump. <laughs> Not everybody stick there. Not everybody stay there. I've had people email me and say they want to break up with the person that they love. Because the person that they love, sick, got leukemia, got... I've had those emails. They want to... Come here, fat girl. Come on, are you ticklish? <laughs> to 
leave because they're so it's it's draining them to see somebody that they love so much dying so they want to leave that person forgetting that there's a possibility that this person could get better a lot of people live in the moment and forget that tough times don't last forever they're temporary they don't last forever nothing lasts forever not even the good this parts this fucking video seems like it's lasting forever and a lot of people aren't strong enough to be able to deal when things go wrong with when things go wrong whether a man is high valued low valued high energy low energy some men appreciate women who stick by them and some men don't you know what the truth of the matter is i think that most relationships where the people build together they probably last the longest like when y'all do stuff together they last the long when you travel together when you you know when you do things together i'm gonna assume because all the people i know that are still married or have been together for a long time it's because they do a bunch of shit together have you noticed when the people stop doing stuff together, they grow apart because they're doing things with other people. They have other friends. They have other family members. They, they, you don't really have a chance to be a couple, a pair. That's why it's hard to get rid of some of your friends that you've been through so much with because you've been through so much with them. And sometimes if you're dealing with a, a high energy person, he might have a whole nother set of reasons why he doesn't appreciate that specific woman. Just because he's my girl's friends are crackheads now, but she won't stop being friends with them. They're all on crack. I valued or he has high energy doesn't mean he's just going to automatically appreciate a woman. And the same thing goes for women. Because they've been through so much together, you know, like rehab. Just because you're a high valued woman or you're a high energy person and you're looking across the room and you see that high energy man that you love so much. Everyone does everything that they do for their own reasons that they may not ever share with you. A lot of the times when you're dealing with high energy people, they look at their situations in, in ways that, you know what, my energy is so high and you must be on low energy if this is what's happening to you. So I'm gonna need for you to deal with this on your own. From now on, when I see a man crumbling i'm gonna let his ass crumble i motivationally speak to him she said she gonna let his ass crumble no you're trying to help his ass crumble ma'am but what i am gonna say to him it's time for our relationship to take a pause what because it's time for you to work on yourself as an individual you need to improve your situation yet you got mad when this man told you he wanted to have nothing to do with you do you guys do you guys hear this shit she said that's what she'd do to a man if she saw he was coming up and he's slipping, that she'd tell him, you know, it's time for us to take a pause. Um, But she was surprised when he told her, I'm going back to my wife. You know, the woman I married. That's the only thing you need to be focusing on, <laughs> not a relationship with me. If I'd have said that shit to Priest, he would have never brought me down so low. So high energy people, or if you're a high valued woman and you're in a relationship with someone and something happens and he ends up falling to the wayside or anything, anything could happen. You need to give that person some time to get their energy back in order. You need to take a step back. You don't have to break up with them, but you need to take a step back and you need to allow that person to fix whatever's going on in their life. Because sometimes people get selfish when they're at their lowest. And they start to do whatever they can, clawing at anything, hurting anything and anybody to get out of that situation. And you. She said sometimes people get upset when at their lowest. You know, like Peter Griffin. He get upset when he's at lowest. Don't want to be the person that they hurt simply because you in close proximity. A lot of people get hurt because they in close proximity to the person that's hurting and lashing out. That's my advice. That's 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 all I, all I can say. That's what I think. 
I appreciate y'all listening, okay? Until next time, make sure you thumbs up the live stream, y'all. All All right? Donate via PayPal. I appreciate that. My cash app is hashtag. He said my joke was Lois Lane. (laughs) Revenue DM. R-E-V-N-E-W DM. Donations would be nice. Uh, My channel, of course, has taken a hit because I reconstructed it and started over. So I'm starting over from the beginning. It's like I just got a new YouTube channel. It is not because you renamed it. She said it's like I got a new YouTube channel. Guys, if you put her name in, the exact same channel comes up. It would be like if I had a channel called Tommy Sotomayor Live and I changed it to Mike Jones University. If you put in Tommy Sotomayor Live, it'd still come up. She said it's like I'm starting a whole new channel. No, it isn't. What is she talking about? The same people who are subscribed to your channel are subscribed to your channel. It didn't change because you changed the name. So whenever you go live, the same people who saw it, saw it. And it. Oh, God. (laughs) So I'm going to need all of the support. I'm going to need you guys to thumbs up, share, and send me any video topic suggestions, okay? And I hate her accent. I have no idea what it is. This is an amalgamation of a bunch of shit. Have yeah. vision and stay focused. Oh, I got my have vision and stay focused tees on yallover.com too. So go to y'all. Oh, yes. Why not buy a stay focused t shirt from her? A person who can't stay focused because, well, she is pretty focused now. Fucking that dude's life up. She's pretty focused on that. She said that and saying, why the well, why don't you go to my website and buy? One of my stay focused shirts from an individual who couldn't even stay focused on. Do you guys understand? She claims she dropped what she had going on to be with this man. Com, all right. Purchase the tea. All right. Nikita wrote in the comment section the best choice I made, I ever made, was not to be afraid of being alone. C. Latisse says the rest of them just looking for validation from multiple sources. And that is not a high valued person. He asked for a divorce and then changed his mind after I agreed to set him free. These are all whole stories. I'm reading the comments they got over here. These are some whole stories. Ooh, battle scars. He has no morals because if he did, he would have divorced his wife. She has no morals because if she did, she wouldn't have fucked a married man. Oh my God. Only a high valued man will appreciate a woman sticking by him during his lowest points. I agree my ex was safe and maybe had a better apartment, etc. Priest is the dustiest man ever. And you're saying this about a woman who lives in hotels. What? His representative, that's what you meant. Oh, sounds like a coward to me. Somebody said, why did you love him? Somebody else wrote like an, uh, let's just see what she wrote. Um, It takes about 18 months to get to know someone. She said, honestly, I, I wouldn't have moved that fast with priests. But then again, you have men you deal with for years that end up doing the same thing. So I don't know. Look, guys, at the end of the day, people can change on you. You can think you know everything about someone and they can change. I think one of the best parts of life is growing with another person. Like it's fun to grow with them. Like that's why whoever I'm with, whatever they like doing, I don't mind doing it. I'm going to grow with them. I want to learn something and then I can teach them something. So it's fun. Walk into it. Explore shit together. Black people, we need to stop thinking that love is supposed to be just this difficult thing. And every relationship we in, it's got to be the struggle, struggle, struggle. I'm sick and tired of women use the word struggle as if it's a positive thing. It isn't a positive thing 
Life is hard and it ends in death. Do you guys understand this? Life is hard and it ends in death. Like when I get high, I start thinking about that. And last night I was high in a bitch. And I kept thinking about death and I was like, I don't want to die. And how's it going to happen? And will it be quick? And what's going to happen afterwards? The only thing I hate about edibles is that I start thinking about death for some reason every time. But if you know that, why would you want to be in life and struggle when you know there's going to come a time where it's going to end in a horrible fucking fashion? Be with somebody where at least you guys can have some fun in this life that's going to end horribly. Enjoy yourself. Don't want to fight. I want to be around somebody that I'm smile when they come around. And when I'm not around them, you think about them. You know what I mean? Like, you ever been with somebody and when you're not with them, all you do is think about you like, man, I could probably sleep better if I was with them. Or I, I or you see something like she would have enjoyed this, or he would think this was funny. And you text them. I, I saw this. I did that. Because you know whatever fun you're having would be more fun with them. That to me is where the type of relationship I'd want to be in. That where if I'm away from you too long, this shit feel horrible. Not when I'm away from you, I'm like, God, dog, I'm so glad. Now, sometimes you do need to get away from the motherfucker you with. You do. You just like, look, I need a break. And it takes more than a Kit Kat bar. So you, you, you go and you go hang out with your girlfriends. You ever hung out with your girlfriends and made you realize, yeah, I'm glad I'm in a relationship. Like, it's like I was teetering on probably breaking up with you until I hung out with these bitches. <laughs> relationship is strong, nigga. <laughs> Fellas, we do it too. We go hang out with these dudes and be like, God, dog, I just realized I'm so glad I got me a woman at home. Let me get back home. That's what you need sometimes. But at the end of, at the end of all of it, be with somebody that in general makes you happy to be with them. Not somebody that you hate to see coming. And we've all been in that around that person where when they ask, can they come over? You trying to find a reason for why they can't. When they ask, can you go see them? You trying to find a reason of why you can't. You just really don't want to be around them like that. Don't be in them kind of relationships. Like I, I have fun going out and sitting down at the dinner table and laughing and joking with the, uh, the the people who are helping the, the wait staff or talking shit about them because they they turn the music off and we shouldn't just just somebody you can talk to about that shit and go see a movie and get out there. I hated this motherfucker it sucked stuff like that enjoy the person you're with guys I enjoyed doing this show how many of you guys enjoyed it even though they only put $67 in that a whole time mm. $67 for two hours. What's that? If I got paid by the hour, it'd be about $30 an hour. It's not bad, but it ain't good. I'm going to keep on doing the show then at $30 an hour. <laughs> I'll just keep going and do a 24-hour show. It'll be a good one. Somebody said, read the donations. Yes, I'm going to read them now. There are some that came through. Uh, am I taking calls? What would y'all call me about? I don't know what y'all would call me about on this one, but I, what I will do is I'm going to read these donations out. 